Hello, everybody. I'm Kanchana Banerjee, and I'm back. And, uh, and, and today I'm here with a very, very interesting, um, successful author, uh, an Indian author, but who stays far, far away in the land of Queen, Shakespeare, and Jack the Ripper. I'm talking about our very own Vish Dhamija. Welcome to the show. Welcome to our, to our session, Vish. Uh, Vish does not need any introduction, but still I, I cannot stay without introducing him a little bit to our, uh, to our uh, listeners. Most of you, I'm sure, would have heard of him, read his books. And if you haven't, then I think you must have just got rescued from an uninhabited island somewhere in the Pacific or Atlantic, because he is not just a very successful and a fantastic writer. He's also an extremely prolific writer. So Vish Dhamija has been voted as India's best uh, page turner author. He's uh, spoken about as one among 10 most popular thriller authors in the country. His first book, Nothing Lasts Forever, which was published in 2010, was long listed for Vodafone Crossword Award. His very, very successful book, which is now uh, going to be made into a web series, three books of his, the first one being Bhendi Bazaar, which was published in 2014, was on India's top 100 crime thrillers and continues to rock the bestseller chart. So, Vish, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Kanchana, for such a long introduction. I get, I mean, I, I get embarrassed with all this introduction. I mean, it's like I thought it was friends chatting. But yeah, it's nice to know that uh, people are reading the books. It's nice to know people are reading books, period. I guess mm -hmm. whose books, there'll be a time they'll read mine, they'll read yours. As long as the reading continues, then, then we are on safe ground, aren't we? And thank you very much for the introduction. And Kanchana right. Banerjee herself is, I have a few questions for you, as I said, that I would kind of put sure. forth at, when, when I get a, get a chance. Sure. So, Vish, I have to tell you this, that, you know, uh, myself, I'm only two books old. And, you know, no introduction of you can be short because you've written so many books over the last 10 to 10 to 12 years. You've written so many books and all of them are bestsellers. You are really, you know, an author like me with just two books to her name. For a person like me, you know, you are where I would love to see myself. So, you know, my introduction of you can never, ever be short. So uh, I, I want let's, to let's get down to... When I want to, when I grow up, I want to be like Kanchana. I tell people this. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so um, Vish, you've written so many books and, you know, uh, the books have so many characters. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative. They're very interesting characters. So um, I want to ask you, how do you develop these characters? Is there an inspiration behind some of the characters, some news item, some uh, personality that you have read about or seen in a movie or read about in a book or in a newspaper uh, report? Uh, we will come to you are very successful character, Rita Ferrer, a little later. But in general, tell us something, uh, tell us a little bit about the characters of your books, of your books and how you develop them. So I guess characterization in my mind, and I'm sure a lot of authors would disagree, uh, but I, I pay a lot of attention to characterization because I've always said that long after the story is forgotten, the character stays in your mind. So, and, I, and I always give this example of the film called Shole, which was before your time. Ki you haven't forgotten any single character out of that film. And that was the, the heart of that film that you had Gabbar to Dhanno, who was just mm. a horse. Mm. And for one scene, Asrani plays that Angrezo ka jailer and, you know, Surma Bopali, we just spoke about Jagdeep. Uh, so, I don't take characters out of real life. Like, you know, Herj, the, the famous creator of Tintin, always picked his characters from people he knew. Not necessarily the same name or not exactly the same. Hmm. But I think Captain Haddock was one of his uncles who, hmm. who he resembled and kind of made. But I don't normally pick up characters from my real life or friends. However, I would be wrong in saying that I don't get inspired by things I see uh, that I don't observe a little deeper when I see an interesting personality, like, uh, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not making, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm making this up. Like, if I see you, then maybe your glasses are something that I might not 
take a note of but when i am describing someone physically maybe those glasses need to come in there just to give that persona of someone who reads or writes or, or a lawyer or something i do take personality traits out of uh, people i know sometimes uh, mm. sometimes i take personality traits of my own so it the the the, the, the whiskey that uh, the uh, akash hingrani drinks not aman our friend is basically what i like he collects the cars like i do music is kind of my taste is always reflected into that mm. uh, some funny one liners that i play which i i i love translating hindi idioms into english and and it becomes a funny saying but it kind of creates a punch so i have a character like that in the new rita ferreira books so he's mm. called idiom kumar he just translates so they come from all sides it's never that i have seen priyanka chopra and i would try and describe her because she's gorgeous but that's not the aim the aim is to create another fictional character which and create her or him so well that people can visualize them so i have actually told that i once received a call from someone uh, or not call the the msn so the uh, facebook messenger saying they spotted rita ferreira at dubai airport which to my mind is a sign of a good character that people have started imagining mm. a fictional character that they have spotted and i guess as we go forward into this and 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 when rita ferreira people can see in flesh and blood on the television not flesh and blood i guess that power of connectivity mm. or the relationship will further uh, get deepen have i made any so i i think that's mm. what you look for right so out of all all the uh, characters that you have in your different books do you have a favorite and the reason why i ask is because i have only two books and out of those two books i have a favorite which i will tell later first to you, do you is there a character do you do you have a who's your favorite who you like I, more than the others i guess for me when i finished writing bendy bazaar which was the first rita for mm. i somehow when i and I, it took me a long time to that was the first dark kind of multi layered plot hmm. uh, and i think it it at the time i was working it took me about good 14 15 months to finish the first draft or the second hmm. draft and it felt like i was parting with a friend that oh is rita over in my life hmm. and if you get the first edition ever i don't know if it's still available i did write in the author's note if if the readers would like to see more Uh, Rita Ferreira books in the market, and I was inundated by the uh, response, the emails, and then when someone uh, sends a message saying they've they've seen Rita Ferreira kind of person, it was kind of cemented that the relationship was there to stay. Mm-hmm. However, it took a bit longer because I had two books uh, with Rita Ferreira, and then because we changed publishers, we I didn't know whether I should write more of the same character, but that got sorted out. because those the rita freda books got picked mm. by half collins and i wrote the third one so in my mind i guess the most uh, favorite or the biggest character which i think at some point and mm. i i don't think that time is very far off now thanks to covid we got delayed i think that character would be far bigger than me as in based amita once she comes on screen depending on who plays how successful that uh, series mm. becomes Uh, on amazon or netflix or whatever it is kind of kind of uh, the platform it gets i think she would kind of become bigger than me and i think that is it i could sit and mope about it thinking oh god how is someone bigger than me or i could feel proud that one of my creations would be bigger than me i i take pride True. in the latter so i think rita ferreira would be one of my uh, most favorite characters and uh, it is getting i am and i really had soft to people like Lee Child and Michael Connelly, who run series, I've written the fourth one. It is getting increasingly difficult and struggling to write more of her books, mm-hmm. and we can talk about it when when we talk we'll about talk it. about it. Yeah. So Amada, you know, like my, so so my favorite in um, in Nobody's Child, which is my second book, is uh, most people most people are surprised when I when I t- when I tell them this. It is Monty. It is you know the. the um, the gang leader's younger brother he's the underdog he's an invalid he's got one leg shorter than the other and he is a little psychotic i think probably you know because i like underdogs and i don't know anyone who remotely resembles 
Monty, and he was completely out of my out of my head. I just created him out of my head, and um, and there's something about. Do you empathize with him? Is is that the reason? Yes, I empathize with him. Mm-hmm. And if and if ever I write a sequel to Nobody's Child, Monty would play a very important role in that story. Okay. Well, see, see, it, it, it's it's um, and 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 it's the character you like that you would like mm-hmm. to take to the next one. So I have mm-hmm. another one called Akash Hingorani, and I did explain at the time when we were traveling together with Aman Hingorani that that name I had chosen without knowing Aman. You remember yeah. that? And yeah. Yeah. Yes. Another book in the same series. Which should be out, which should have been out in uh, next year, but I don't know how the time schedules are now. Uh, mm-hmm. Which is called Justice. So Akash Hingorani returns in the sequel uh, or or the second part of the series. So if you get attached to the characters, it makes sense to make them you know travel a few books before you think what to do with them. True. So you know when you um, when you create a character, and I'm talking about the principal characters, not just the protagonist, but the but the principal characters, and that includes the negative negative character as well. When you uh, before you start writing, I'm just trying to understand your writing process because as a as a co-writer, I uh, I'm always very interested in knowing about the writing process of other authors. So do you do detailed uh, character sketches of? the different characters or of the principal character how he or she looks how tall how thin how fat short hair you know curly hair straight hair color of eyes do you do any detailed character sketches how does it how do you do i do detailed character sketches however i don't do physical uh, detailed character sketches mm. so height hair color all <clears> these <throat> things I, i i kind of make up as i go along however if there is a kind of streak of madness in the negative like in 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 the entire rita ferrera series there is this uh, commissioner of mumbai police shown who has this kink of coming up with the most atrocious biggest english words so he stands mm-hmm. apart so the character is built around that he's he just always looks like someone who is a villain from the james bond black and white film always dressed always ready for golf mm-hmm. he's more a politician than a policeman so that character is kind of was there which i wanted to portray and as i went mm. along i gave him more physical looks about what he looks like uh, the guy i told about edm kumar i and that was basically because a lot of people who know me personally said that they love rita ferrera books but they, there was a lack of some humor which they expected after they met me so i thought i should introduce a character who kind of does give some fun part in a book which is normally very gruesome rita ferrera books are generally dark if if, if you read any one of them hmm. so i knew this character yes, would kind of yeah so he would come up with he would look at someone and say uh, one flower two gardeners which then you have to translate ek phool do mali so he comes up with these funny ones at the at the right in appropriate time to break that darkness that the police most people if you spoken to police officers they have mm-hmm. this morbid sense of humor and you might think that they are cracking a joke when they're sitting with a dead body but believe you me i I've, i've seen them closely if they don't have that sense of humor they cannot survive so it it's just to make light of the situation mm-hmm. they are put in day after day month after month mm-hmm. year after year so coming back yes the personality traits of akash hingorani were planned a lot before i decided what the character would actually look like Hmm. So I do the and main characters, not not if you. I'm sure you know it better than me that as you write, that you think there should be another character who comes in and goes. So those are characters hmm. which are marginal on the periphery, which is fine. But you have four or five lead characters. You know what you want to play them. So in 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 lipstick, for example, I knew that this guy needs to have an alter ego, which keeps. So he always keeps blaming crazy me. Tells me to do this. So it's it's him, not me. I'm fine. so you you had to build that persona so i had to give a back story of how that little pagal entered into his mind and made him do what he was doing mm-hmm. so like how much how much of how much of research uh, is do you do to write your books because you know some of your books are legal thrillers uh, with a lot of you know legal intricacies in them and legal proceedings which with which you can't and and because of the because of the very successful legal thrillers that you have written i have to tell our listeners that uh, 
which has has earned the moniker of uh, being called India's John Grisham, and uh, this uh, uh, and his and his legal thrillers. You know, and this is not just me or his friends calling him so. This is this is the media and certain some newspapers who have who have uh, given this um, very deserving title to him. So you know, tell me tell me about the amount uh, about the kind of research that you do to write your books. So first of all, that moniker, I, you know how it happened. I have I have never liked because I don't want to be compared. He's you might be bigger than me, you might be smaller than me, you might be better than me, but I I want to stand. I think the first legal thriller when it hit the market, the first person who the media guy who saw it, I think it must have happened. Legal thriller, John Grisham did that, and he made the connections. And then it's kind of. But it's I, good. I mean, you know, there's there, there's no harm in it. It's okay. No, we don't need to do that because today, who is the biggest star on the planet? In 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 the film world around the world, Shah Rukh Khan. You 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 can count it the way you want. The number of films he does, the number of modeling assignments, the model, the businesses he runs. He's one of the biggest bankable stars on the planet today. But you don't go to the US and say, "Oh, he's Brad Pitt. Hai. He's in, he's America." Shah Rukh Khan. Why do we need that comparison? Shah Rukh Khan is. Uh, I mean, Brad Pitt. Ko to need Shah Rukh Khan's endorsement. So, we need someone else. But okay, this is a debate. We'll have to do it next time. Milenge, tab so, I am, I've never been into yes. comparisons. Uh, legal thrillers, yes. Uh, I'm not sure if you were aware. I did one year of law. When, after my I know you mentioned that. Huh? Uh, hmm. And I dropped out. So, I always had that keen interest in law. And hmm. oh, years later, I think the only way i think life doesn't give everyone a second chance to correct a past mistake and i was fortunate that i was in a position ki main likh raha tha and the my fascination for legal thrillers is kind of comes from a fact that have you ever been inside a court room aur to aapne filmon mein to dekha hi hoga a court hmm. built for audience but yeah you don't go to a doctor surgery and when you go to the doctor everyone watches you and but in a court room when there is a court happening there are audience which means there is a certain level of interest in people to see court proceedings i think that's how the legal thrillers were born and because i had one year of law my interest in law my understanding of some part of law plus the advantage mm-hmm. i have is because i was i did one year of law and though i dropped out uh i had a bank of my friends who kind of carried on became successful lawyers and therefore if if i get stuck in my research you know kai bar you be reading on the web and you still don't understand whether this article meet x y z you know you can always call up the phone and uh, ask them plus after two three i have enough readers who become my yaar uh, if i my help so i can call them up uh wo reader hai mile hai unko bhai i can always send a query on whatsapp and they send me a detail a uh, response in saying this is your understanding this is correct this is wrong and i have in fact called up a common friend aman hingorani and asked for uh, help so it mm. it requires a little bit of primary research as well you can't just go on the web do something and then think ye indian context mein kaise chalega plus what are the you know uh, section numbers that that can kind of make it nullified or something so you need that kind of first level of research which ya to aap lawyer ho aur aap ko padha hua ho and you know the entire proceedings mm-hmm. or you you need to have a, a bank of people who are happy enough to help you so research to come this is to research ke bina you I, i doubt you can write maybe one book based on some of your own experiences so mm-hmm. but uh, if you have to write any genre after a while you need a lot of research if not only for the case of a legal or crime or police procedures or even for locations i'm sure you do a lot of research yes. on what is the television program at the time if you're writing a story in 2001 what cars were available in india rather than writing ki wo ambassador khareed laya 2010 mein you see it's it's those True. little things that you need to be very careful about yeah. authenticity is important that authenticity is important it's very important yeah so okay um now i'm going to just take a uh, deviate the conversation a little bit and cite a very funny incident that happened because the because the question that i asked i know 
what what she's going to ask me so this so this this goes back to uh, 2016 my first book had uh, no, 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 had no, just come out no, 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 you can't take my thunder i have that no, no, i'm not taking your question away i'm not taking your question away and we had gone to kumaulit fest and i had made a certain comment about about it about the author's connection uh, with the story Mrs. okay Chief. now i believe i'm not asking don't worry i'm not asking your question so you know i firmly believe that there is always a story behind every story so wish tell me something you you know is there a story behind the stories that you have written and the reason why i ask again i will say that you know like nobody's child uh, i got the um, i got the idea for the story from uh, from a letter written by a young girl in an agony aunt column of a magazine way back in 2002 Hmm. so you know um, and uh, and the opening scene of uh, of nobody's child where uh, where the protagonist is dragged and roaming around in the city uh, like on the roads of bombay it is also from a true incident that happened with a supermodel almost hmm. about 7 uh, 8 years ago i think her name was gitanjali something she hmm. was found in a horrible uh, physical state loitering you know on the streets of bombay completely drugged and that stayed stayed in my mind so you know i believe that every story has a back story so tell me something about you know your bhendi bazaar the very successful series bhendi bazaar and the and the other rita ferrer uh, uh, stories or the other legal thrillers that you have written is there a story behind the story which inspired you which stayed with you that that prompted yeah. you to write so there are instances so some of them are purely imaginative you cannot imagine that i would have been put into any circumstances that rita ferrer's bendy bazaar was that was totally uh fictitious mm. uh, but coming to legal thrillers yes if you remember i there's this book called mogul yes now in the mogul what i did was there was this uh little loophole in the law as to how the entire mm. police force around the world collected mm. the dna and it came out in i think 2001 or i'm not i i did do the kind of analysis at the end of the book and said it's a spoiler don't go and read it the uh, there was a case of a rape and the dna found in the victim and when they finally traced the dna back to whoever mr x was mr x was in the jail he couldn't have done it so mm-hmm. it's the way they were collecting dna that could lead to false arrest and false prosecution so that somebody and i think it was an indian canadian who kind of we did the research and found out so i took that wrong dna collection i did not date the book so i said don't try it now you will not if you are unfortunate enough to be in that condition you would be caught yeah. and i took that little nugget of fact that i kind of found out and based the whole fictitious story about it and it's about this guy who's accused of murdering his ex wife and his uh, ex wife hmm. husband and i also did a play in the narrative that there are seven characters one of them being the mogul himself but the mogul doesn't say a word it's all it's a story from six perspectives and the story kind of drops from one and the goes to sec- the goes from the inspector to the prosecuting lawyer to the defense lawyer to to his friend to his sister and all, they just carry the story but he doesn't speak anything and in the end uh, it's it's the it's the wrong dna or whatever i don't want to give the uh similarly the high start is the idea came to me i was in amsterdam uh 3 4 5 years ago and looking at that mm. anyone who goes to amsterdam goes to van van gogh i don't know how to pronounce it van gogh <laughs> yeah and you know in 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 those you know they put you that little thing you hear on your phone well, the, the electronic guides that huh. you take a phone give a pound and you return the phone it's all recorded yes, yes. In number 5 audio guide yeah audio guide and in one of the things he is he happens to be one of the most stolen artists around the world his works have been stolen the maximum and one of his paintings actually got stolen twice so first time it was recovered okay. second time it went missing from hmm. uh, a museum in egypt it's called the poppy flowers and i said it can make a wonderful plot if it's a missing painting and no one knows where it is it can well be in india so True. i have kind of for the for that story put in the story uh, painting in india and therefore this rogue guide anti hero 
you're supposed to steal it, but things obviously, it's one thing stealing a multi-million dollar painting, it's another thing to get away with it. Because the guy you're stealing it from is not is not shown as someone light hand. He goes in to steal for someone, they get after him, the police are after him. So it's a very, it's a more a getaway story and, and a heist. So these kind of things do, I mean, come in your mind and you kind of get not inspired, but yeah, a little fact and then you twist it around, make a whole story. Uh, and nothing lasts forever. The first one is largely in places that I have personally been in. So I, I've been to Egypt, I've been to Dubai, I've been to Spain, I've been to UK, I've been in Bombay and Delhi. So for Sarah, the, as I said, the first book is, I wouldn't say biographical or autobiographical, but you do have shades of what you know because you want to bring as much authenticity into it. I mean, at the end of the day, you know it is fiction, but it needs to sound realistic. So, in the can, can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, please, most uh, certainly. So, uh, tell me, I know you are two books, but what you your first book was, uh, and 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 I need to really understand. The first book was a romance, end of an affair, or the uh, forgotten affair. Forgotten affair. No, it was not a romance. I would, I would, uh, I would like see. It's not a classic, classic romance because it's not a love story. Uh, it's more of a relationship story. Okay, but from relationship uh, to crime. Hmm. So, why, how, could we start now? Tell Okay. So, so the thing is that you know the um, the subject of uh, emotional abuse that that a lot of educated women uh, in affluent, so-called affluent, sophisticated, classy, you know, um, upper class families, uh, you know, one usually associates um, domestic abuse uh, with, the, with the lower class. But there is a very, a very subtle and a very uh, extremely um, harmful Abuse that, yeah, passive aggression that happens in very, very affluent families. And, uh, you know, I have, I, unfortunately, I have had the front row seat with some of my very close friends who have, who have been enduring this and some of my uh, aunts in, in the larger family circle. And I have grown up seeing them, you know, the uncles and some of my very close friends, you know, and uh, some of my work, um, work friends are, uh, like I used to be a freelance writer, so some of the web designers that I've worked with, you know, I I I, uh, I distinctly remember she she would never, you know, she used to ask me to give her money in uh, uh, you know in small installments so that her husband would not get to know how much she's earning. And I used to ask her that why are you why are you doing this? She said, you know, he gets upset if I if he knows that I'm working. He gets upset if I save my money because if I save my money, that means I'm trying to establish my own independence, and you know, someday I will walk away. He prefers that I spend it all. So these are, you know, and you know, and some of these women don't didn't even realize the abusive, uh, abusive um, uh, atmosphere or family, you know, relationship that they are stuck in. And this this used to trouble me a lot. So you know, and I always knew that that my first book is going to be about this. But uh, but if you read a forgotten affair, it does have uh, it does have some very um, thrilling uh, moments to it. You know, it is not. Uh, it is not totally like you can say that it, uh, it is a romantic thriller. There are there are a few suspenseful. There are a few you know chilling, nail biting events. So you know, like after I finished, uh, I mean after this book was out, Arko Paul Chaudhary of Harper Collins, who was my editor, he said that Kanchana, I think you know, inside you there is a thriller writer who is just waiting to come out, and. Uh, you know, as a as a person, I've always enjoyed reading thrillers. It's not that I've started reading thrillers in the last three four years. I've always enjoyed, I've always enjoyed reading thrillers. I've always, yeah, Kool Karaba. I've always enjoyed watching thriller movies. So you know, uh, I think it was it was just yeah, yeah. I'm a thriller writer at heart, I guess. Yeah. Also, there is no rule book. But largely, people stick to the genres they write. I'm not saying yes. that, that's a good I can also write something else. If you should basically write what you enjoy writing, and I, I think that I believe in totally when I say that. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Last question, mm -hmm. 
uh, let's discuss Rita Rita Ferreira a little more. So she she made her first appearance in the book Bhendi Bazaar, which was about uh, sex trafficking, a very interesting plot set in Bombay, etc. Then she was in Dusra, which was about a diamond uh, a diamond uh, trade, etc. And the third one, which is lipstick, is a uh, is about a serial killer. That yes, how sir. she and her yeah, it's a serial killer. Yeah, yeah, okay. Lipstick is a th- is a is a serial killer. killer. Look, you know, he has written so many books that he's forgotten the stories of his own book. I mean, this, is, this, this just takes, it, takes the cake, man. It's like that. You know, I would love to get to a point like this where I just can't remember when I wrote it. So many books. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, so tell us about the fourth Rita, Rita Ferreira book that you're writing. This is where I got confused because the fourth one is not a serial killer. Though there are multiple murders, but because they find two bodies in two different locations within a span of four or five days, it they realize that it can't be uh, a serial killer because serial killers knew, need a cooling off period between that. Uh, mm. It's called it's called Showtime. It's Showtime, and uh, it's done. My first draft, second draft, it's got done by I have a friend called here Patrick who kind of looks at it, edits it, and what. And it has now uh, on the way to my agent. So that's the fourth one. I don't know when, uh, because uh, we were supposed to have a book launch in June, but that's got delayed because of some printing problems. So I don't know how the uh, dominoes will fall because there are few books in the pipeline before that one. My idea was somehow if I could manage it, I was planning this book should ideally be launched when the series come live. It just makes sense from every perspective that you have series coming in and the new book coming in. But I don't know if that's achievable because even the timing for the series, which was supposed to be this year, might now move because of the shooting in Ayori and everything is kind of come to a grinding mm. halt. So the fourth one is called it's Showtime. Unless, of course, now so, my agent or someone changes the name later. But uh, is there going to be a Vishtamija book in 2020 or early 2021? Book is there. It's it's when they have the uh, WO printing shuruhoki because I did discuss ki, can we do online first and all but you know everyone has so if I'm talking to somebody in a publishing house they are they have 70,000 other corporate things ki bhai isko kaise so it's it's it, it, Despite my pushing ki jane do, it mm-hmm. hasn't happened because there was some problem in the printing press. So, wo book hi nahi hui abhi. so it's all ready. Everything is fine. Okay, mm-hmm. the minor modifications in the cover. There's some this. Ne. I think now they're looking at October because what is it called? Uh, Prisoner's Dilemma. It's a totally okay. different and- one of more psychological thriller than anything else. Can you tell us a little bit about the story? Huh? You know, you've heard of Prisoner's Dilemma. So one of the best examples is I, I always give. I've even given in the book I learned in B school. This is an economic uh, statistical concept where they say that two people, despite them wanting to be acting in each other's favor, end up contradicting themselves. So the story is that there's these two guys who before the exam go out partying and they get drunk and they meet women and they do not come back for the exam. So they come for the exam a little later and tell the teacher, can we take the exam again? He said, but the others have already appeared for the test. What happened? You are good students. So they try to make a story, ki, you know, mummy bimar ho thi, we drove and then on the way back, by the time we were coming, our car mein puncher ho gaya, and here we are and we got delayed. So the professor thinks, yeah, you're not a bad student. So what, what we'll do is come tomorrow. I'll give you a different test because ye test paper to leave ho gaya. And I'll give you another test and come. So both of them end up at the exam center. And he says, okay, ek ko is mein hai, ek ko is mein hai. and the entire paper has one question, which tire? So now you haven't decided. And then this is what business dilemma is. Ki wo kya bolega aur kya bolega. And this is what police yeah. uses around the world. To capture two criminals, they kiss camera, kiss camera, and they keep telling him, uh-huh. ye wala hai, and he'll take a good, sweet deal, or you want to give a deal. So the whole uh-huh. story is less of action, more plays. He's playing the two 
uh, not victims, culprits, psychologically. The, and the inspector is shown as someone who's clumsy, who gir jata hai. Oh, matlab, he's playing funny, hmm. but these guys are lawyered up and he doesn't allow them to meet each other, neither the lawyer. But I did out. So it's shown from one perspective. And this guy is shown in a turmoil. So that's the. So it's a, it's a very uh, different kind of story. Very interesting. I must, I must tell our uh, viewers at this point that Vishtamija is represented by, uh, by the country's one of the leading um, literary agents uh, uh, called Meeta Kapoor. So, you know, he's, yeah. uh, he's represented by, by Meeta. So, you know, um, um, as a person who's written so many thrillers um, to an aspiring thriller writer or a person Whatever. who wants to write a thriller, according to what? you, what would be the chief ingredients or main features, important features in a thriller? I guess pace is one of them. But pace does not mean like, you know, when you watch Breed 2, I have... I will, I will give you an example from, hmm. and people come back and say Are, it looked like a bit drag no it didn't look drag that is how the author of that series wanted it to be if you really want a shot I can write you a one page synopsis of every book I've written it will take away the whole romance of reading a book and there will be and what happens is like Bendy Bazaar was initially 120,000 words it was chopped down to 85 or 90 I would say do not let the pace drop because the moment mm. the pace drops, it gets sluggish. Now, there is no hardcore formula because what you might find interesting, Coral might think, Yaar, ye ab ho gaya hai. but as an author, as your beta readers, you need to see ki if someone mm. says ki it is dragging in any part, you need to kind of move. Because I know how difficult it is for any author. When they start chopping words, you feel itni mehnat, you know, it's like someone's cutting through your own flesh. But that's why a good editor is required to keep that pace. Secondly, it should have interesting buy stories. You know, those twists and stuff. Uh, mm. Interesting enough for someone to read, but not so interesting that they take you away from the plot. The buy story mm. should not become more interesting than be realistic. The main plot. Mm. Be realistic. Anything you write can be checked on the web today. You don't even need to mm. call the police guy to ask. If, if, it, if Even if there's a I'll tell you about mobile. If there's a 10% chance of it can be done, then it should put can be put into fiction. Otherwise, it, it it kind of puts itself into a fantasy. And believe you me, once they once a reader finds something which is unrealistic or impossible, he will lose or she will lose interest because then it starts looking like something which is just hodgepodge into a frying pan and fried. So pace, crisp, characterization. What and and give as much detail as you think the because people are interested in detail, but there's no strict line. Ki iske baad bor ho so you need to have that. Uh, you need to have that sense, which uh, which is where I think reading comes in. You know, if you read if you read the bestsellers, if you read good successful uh, books in that genre, you you kind of develop develop a sense of that. Because at the end of the day, we all. I mean. I don't know about your past degree. I don't have a degree in literature or something. So for me to pick up, ito, one is, it also enhances your language. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I don't want to speak Hindi in Hindi English, mein, but it's a way that sky is blue or sky is a shade of blue. Wo sab, you know, you, you read, you realize and subconsciously True. it starts working on your language. So when you start describing a house, you don't just say brickwork. They'll say, the, it's, the mere saamne dikh rahe, it's like dry blood colored bricks and there were some shades of black and you, you start picking up that language exactly it also works on how you use narrative so i i mm. seldom use a chronological uh huh. narrative it doesn't go from so it goes flashback past and back or first person and third person or first person from different perspectives so i keep doing that and that's that's the only way to learn so i read about good I read about a novel a week. Yeah, that he does. I mean, like I, uh, I follow you on Instagram. Uh, you know, I, I, I can see that you are a voracious reader. Oh, so which, which brings me to the, so which, which brings me to the next question that you know, uh, 
are there books which have influenced you have you been influenced by any author and the reason i ask because i myself you know uh, i have been influenced quite deeply by by a few authors one of them being mary cubica and uh, she you know claire mackintosh and etc who mary have i'm reading that book uh, the other misses okay uh, i read other another book of hers abhi usse pehle okay so you know i uh, like before before i started writing nobody's child i was uh, reading a couple of books by mary cubica and i and i really got i really got very interested in the uh, use of layered narrative uh, you know going back and forth first person second person third person in fact claire mackintosh's um, i let you go is an uh, extremely interesting book which is written in all three persons so did first you not person, second you person and third person Did you not meet her when she came to Delhi? She was with us. No, I I was not I, there I, at that. I, I was, was not there at the Delhi fest. I I kind of uh, had a session with her. I I read her hmm. book. She was she's an ex police officer. Yeah. Hmm. Exactly. So you know, like um, um, tell our viewers uh, a bit about some of the books that you have read, which have influenced you, which have uh, stayed with you, and from which you may have learned, um, you know, few things. What? what? मेरी वाली पढ़ी है ना मैं तो नहीं नहीं आई आई वाज जस्ट किडिंग नो कांट अ पर्टिकुलर बुक दैट इंस्पायर्ड मी और एनीथिंग बट यस देयर आर सम ऑथर्स व्हिच आर रियली रियली रिस्पेक्ट माइकल कॉनली इज राइट अप देयर आई डोंट नो इफ यू गाइस हैव वॉच रेड हिम ही हैज अ सीरीज ऑन एमेजन प्राइम कॉल्ड बॉश हैरी बॉश इज लीड डिटेक्टिव आई थिंक ही इज ही इज अ क्राइम राइटिंग जीनियस uh halan mm. kopan is very good and now you have series of his i love yeah. joe desbo i love the, the new author that i've fallen in love is mark edwards his psychological thrillers from page 1 you are so agitated and you just it just builds on you throughout if you start his book you lose your sleep is that mm. he's that good uh, uh john grisham i mean there's no argument yeah Jeffrey, these are the authors if they write a laundry list you'll be able to pick and read and interest ke ha kuch to acche likha hai so mm. there are and, and the in the older generation two of them one of them as wins hands down is james elroy he wrote a book called uh, black dahlia so he has a la portrait there's four of them white jazz black dahlia la confidential was a very famous movie and i'm forgetting the i think the fourth one oh, oh, if you if you look uh his mother was killed by a serial killer and the killer was never found and he became a cynic so la confidential is quite cynical if you look at the the, the noir that the american and he influenced me a lot so all the dark books that are uh, if mm. i could ever give homage to him i would say sir you kind of taught me there's another good old time author called lawrence sanders the third deadly sin is amazing you have to read the book i have i think i've read it twice now uh it's and i think the first deadly sin i haven't read but i've seen the movie and it stars frank sinatra so it it, it these are there these are authors which uh i like and then everyone's had their fill of nancy drew mm. and agatha christie and sherlock holmes and to what yeah. goes without saying there's no point in kind of it's like music ki baat karo to beatles to understood hi aage chalo na there's no point in talking about beatles because everyone's heard them so i'm talking about authors which haven't got I mean, they, they, these guys are as big as uh, you can get, and Claire Beckett is really good. Uh, Mark Edwards, this Cubica, this another. I, I keep. I'm asking why? Because I'm uh, I'm ordering from Amazon. Under one thing, na. So they have kind of figured out that I'm what I'm looking for. So next psychological thriller, first they tune and give it to me. So which is which is a good thing. So I'm 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 Yeah, if you are, if you read, look. My wife keeps telling me, "Why don't you read something else?" What can I do? The Bible, read. What What do you expect me to read? So uh, it's it's uh, yeah. So overall, <laughs> you, even though I can't pinpoint this book or that person, I think subconsciously it it works in a language that inspires you. One book that I can and the movie, if you haven't read the book, is called Lincoln Lawyer. I always talk about it. It's by Michael Connelly. that's that's his legal thriller amazing it's got that guy in the book uh, actor mickey the guy the guy the guy mickey is played by main naam bhul jata hu he is very he won the oscar as well okay one well, of the oscars so you is, know um, recently i was uh, like i'm part of a lot of um, um 
uh, author writer groups on on facebook and there was a very interesting interesting question which one which one of the members had just put up uh, getting published with a big author uh, with a with a big publishing house vis-a-vis -vis getting published in a small publishing house so you know wish you you've had you've had quite an interesting journey yourself you you began with shrishti with rumor books and you and you had a very varied experiences with uh, with rumor books and then uh, you've moved on to you know the reputed publishing houses like papa collins and, and others so you know as a person who's had so many years of experience with with the small medium and very reputed publishing house so as an author you know like um, what would what would your word be uh, small uh, publishing house aapne kya soch raha hai ki ab yahan controversy karke iski books jalwaye kahin then what what is the aim of this no no i i i i can answer it that's it i think it's not small or big i think you need to see what is the publisher's commitment towards taking a new author sometimes hmm. if it's a very large publishing house and if they have 75 authors writing crime and then you kind of unless you come up with some real gem there are chances that you might get lost in the crowd i'm not saying it happens i'm not saying it happened to me i'm not saying ki ye ho ye par ye ho sakta hai there is a probability hmm that smaller houses ka minus ye hai pehle dono ke minus bata deta hu minus ye hai ki they might not have so much clout with the uh, retail stores they might not have so much cloud with the media however the balance is somewhere in between where you find comfort with the marketing of the uh, publisher and the editor you work with i think two more important is how things is how comfortable are you with the editor and who's not mm -hmm. my first ek maine kisi se baat kari thi main unka naam nahi lunga unke through unhone rumor books laai thi all her job in editing was to chop down number of words now that's not editing that's not you this is what we face you need to have comfort like i have a huge comfort level with siahi so i know even i'm told ki ye pehle teen chapter thode kas do literally to main kas deta hu i don't then go and argue with do nahi karunga ji main kyun inko tight karunga so you hmm. you have that faith ki the other person knows the market right from the literary agent then it goes to the publisher and editor has good intentions when she or he tells you ki kya karo and and you understand that the publishing house has enough uh, distribution because mm -hmm. large problem distribution ki ho jati hai ki book pahunchti nahi hai so a very small publisher might not have that distribution however he or she might give you a very big attention so that ki bhai kanchana is the biggest name with us now to be able to kind of pander to her needs the other there's a chance it so many people that there's a chance that despite their muscle you might be just one another in the crowd so it's a, it's a the mix of your comfort level with uh, others and you can always try somebody else to I, i don't think there is a set formula because you have had self published books which have gone on to become the biggest uh, run 50 shades of grey was self published for example so aisa nahi hai ki nahi hoga but you basically play with probabilities that probability kiski high and i think comfort level is uh, a bigger thing to be than the publishing house but in my case mein now ye hai ki i just what i i don't argue with siahi if they think this book fits a particular publishing house then i let them take the message would you would you ever think of uh, self publishing i self publishing ka the only challenge is it will only be online bhai main physically books print karke to nahi bech sakta wo shop mein nahi pahunchegi uh i haven't thought about it but yeah maybe someday i will try ki choti choti no because they will some come a point where ya to book kisi ko pasand nahi aayegi because i am kind of writing all kind of things ya wo bahut choti hogi ya bahut badi hogi at some point i'll say nahi ye to bhaiya 1.5 lakh word ki hi rakhunga and some editor might say then go and find yourself so i don't know i can never say never so i don't think there is any shame in self publishing because there are people have done wonders with it there is more money in our pocket which we seldom get otherwise uh, and and if it the, the premise is what are you writing for if you enjoy writing then it doesn't matter whether big publisher small publisher you want readers to appreciate what you've done and that is what true 
enjoyment is. That's why I keep playing with different formats and different uh, themes and stuff because it is cut karke bore ho jata and the last thing you want is getting bored in this who bore only to 9 to 5 job it so why do you have to do this to get bored exactly true true is it true that on one of the trips we were i think you were with some upcoming authors you made the comment like it's never the author that writes the story but the story finds the author could you explain for us what it okay. to everyone who's viewing no interaction with wish no matter no matter how many times we meet is ever complete without him bringing up this once i'm going to i'm going to explain it to you but i'm going to ask you this question myself that haven't you ever felt and you have you have gone on record in another youtube session with another author saying that while i tease kanchana a lot it is not entirely untrue so wish aap batao that you know haven't you felt that that sometimes the story you know comes to you doesn't it no no pehle aap answer to do fir main bataunga okay. so you know the the thing is that i feel that um you know a story i know this is going to sound uh, like a psycho babble mumbo jumbo no, but we want to listen to it <laughs> no no i am i'm not going to one could to let this go so uh, so you know a, a story is a living breathing feeling organism it's not it's not a dead inanimate thing that that just sits in the corner of the room uh, a story has a story has a heart it has a soul and in its own weird way through our dreams or through that little spark that comes to us the story embeds in our in our in our consciousness and some and you know i have experienced is that the uh, nobody's child the first version that i wrote which harper collins rejected even before they rejected somewhere in somewhere at the back of my mind i knew that this is not going to go through because i knew that i had not um, you know i had not done justice to the story and a different version of the story was all was already you know um, knocking at knocking inside my head first it was just a whisper and then you know it grew louder that the you know so 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 when swati who was my editor for the second one when she came back and when she told me that kanchan i'm sorry we don't know how to market this book the entire process of submission to a publishing house and them getting back to you takes 3 4 months sometimes even longer so even before harper collins had come back to me i had submitted the uh, original draft of Uh, the earlier draft of nobody's child to another very big reputed uh, publishing house and conversations with them had gone very far and harper collins had said no to me so i had a rejection in my hand and conversation that was happening with a with, with a leading publishing house and i told them that i don't want to go ahead with the story i am going to rewrite the story and i distinctly remember that when i stepped out of their office in cyber hub on a january cold morning i was telling right, myself for the publisher ha batai diya maine batai diya i was i was like you know i was telling myself that are you the most are you the biggest idiot are you the most foolish person on earth you do not have a uh, acceptance you have a rejection note in your inbox and you are telling another big publishing house ka senior senior editor that don't go ahead i'm going to rewrite the story and i'm going to you know i want to rewrite the whole story but you, know, you, should, you should never ask such questions to yourself if you have such doubts ki are you the biggest whatever whatever we'll always help in responding bilkul <laughs> <laughs> so i so i honestly believe i know this sounds very weird i honestly believe that you know the story reaches out to you it does reach out to you and i'm 100% sure you can tease me till the cows come home and go back out in the fields again wish and i'm 100% sure you have felt this too no no i i understand i just you know it's it's, it's nothing malicious i like no, 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 it it sounds very corny jab bhi main whenever i mention you or i mention this i always say yeah i believe in her so main kabhi kaise nahi mujhe pata hai i know that okay so now with that we come to the last question of our very interesting session so um crime thriller books in india today versus the international uh, crime thrillers you you you've written so many of them based indian characters based in india and you read a whole lot of them from international authors 
what is your take on the crime stories that indians are writing today and vis-a-vis -vis the ones that are getting published abroad i think we have a fantastic quality of writers brilliant narratives uh hamari reach in terms of the outside world so i've had the discussion with some people here and yahan pe kya jaise internationally yahan pe the english market is saturated with the writers home grown jo bach jata hai wo us se aa raha hai then they have found a liking for the norwegian the dark swedish uh, literature there's some very some translated wo swedish bhi translated from japan aane laga so it is it is still not the indian crime fiction has become international it will take a while whether it happens in our lifetime or not we don't know india yahan pe and worldwide crime is the second largest selling genre after romance romance erotica mills and boons aap usme sab add kar lo ek club mein kaha to because crime ke bhi kab sub genres hai to uske romance ke bhi sub genres nahi uh india mein crime is quite small so the biggest in india would be uh, mythology which is a kind of a fantasy because with things that can happen uh then we have romance and we have which is now waning off which is the slice of life college life chora chamara type books jo matlab college life ki thi and you know ladke bhag rahe hain it just slice of life kind of which i don't know what genre to put it in but lifestyle not lifestyle uh i don't uh, like a uh, a book or version of zindagi na milegi dobara you know those kind of three idiots that kind of waisi books kaafi hai crime would be number 4 so uh now you we can look at it two ways ki wo purani kahani hai ki wo ek aadmi joote bechne he went to africa and he came back saying wah to koi joote pehenta hi nahi hai so how will i sell jootas the other guy went and said ki koi bhi nahi pehenta kitne log hai joote pehenane ko so we have a whole market so the thing is you could look at glass half full or glass half empty because it's very small and the other thing is it's not that people are not reading crime they are still reading foreign crime thoda challenge marketing mein hai because mai jab i don't know about you you would have you you gone to more bookstores than i have you go and you see lipstick between ramayan and mahabharat तो वो द लॉजिकल क्वेश्चन इज ये सीता की है या द्रौपदी की है बिकॉज इट विल नॉट सेल एंड आप वो क्राइम जस्ट बिकॉज इट्स बाय एन इंडियन ऑथर इट्स प्लेस बिटवीन नो वन एल्स दैट दिस क्राइम तो जो क्राइम ढूंढ रहा है वो तो वहां आएगा ही जो वो महाभारत लेने आया है उसे क्राइम चाहिए ही नहीं तो वो इट्स मिसप्लेस्ड इन ऑल और जहां वो क्राइम ढूंढने जाता है वहां उसे हाल एंड कॉमन दिख जाता है बीस और कलसा मैच तो दिखते ही नहीं है So, वो पहले एक महीना डेढ़ महीना जब तक वो चार्ट्स में ऊपर घूमती रहती है दिखती रहती है तो सबको दिखती है उसके बाद वो एक शेल में जाके इंडियन ऑथर के साथ लग जाती है नाउ इफ यू इफ यू एक्चुअली लुकिंग एट माइथोलॉजी और रोमांस व्हाई वुड यू लुक एट भेडी बाजार और नो बडी इट इट डजेंट मेक एनी सेंस टू बी स्टॉप द वे इट्स लाइक टेकिंग अ रॉक एल पी लेट जेपलिन का और उसे लगा दो क्लासिक में वो बिकेगा ही नॉट एनीथिंग रॉन्ग विद लेट जेप और पिंक वर्ड बट दी बायर इज नॉट लुकिंग देर एंड यू नॉट वे द बायर इज लुक तो थोड़ा सा भी वो आई गेस दैट वुड काइंड ऑफ क्लेरिफाई कि कैसे होगा लकीली ऑनलाइन दैट आर स्टार्टेड हैपनिंग सो क्राइम का लोगों को पता लगता है क्राइम क्या है क्राइम ढूंढो तो मिल जाता है इंडियन फॉरेन भी मिल जाते हैं सो so, थोड़ा तो स्टॉकिंग की भी प्रॉब्लम है एंड आई थिंक एज आई सेड एज लॉन्ग एज यू आर एंजॉइंग इट तो मैं आई एम नॉट स्विचिंग माई जॉनर जब आई एम नॉट सेवर से नेवर आई माई स्विच वन डे बट अभी आई एम Fairly interested. I'm very looking forward to the Rita Ferreira series on television. I'm writing two, three books. I'm ready to publish. 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 I'm ready to and the question people are missing is kitne paise kitne paise bana liye main keh raha tha yaar if you really want to make money i can show you 20 other professions you'll make more money so goal kya hai if your interest is writing then write aisa nahi hai koi nahi khareedega koi na koi publisher to milega nahi to aap khud publish kar sakte ho one or two books then you will find a publisher 
बट इफ द गोल इज की मेरे को वहां पहुंचना है उसके लिए यहां से जाने को तैयार नहीं हो तो इट्स इट्स अ अ जर्नी फॉर मी इफ यू डू कंपैरिजन ऑफ द कंटेंट से अमेरिकन और अदर इंग्लिश स्पीकिंग कंट्रीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ऑथर्स राइटिंग क्राइम एंड क्राइम एंड थ्रिलर्स विज वी इंडियन इंडियंस राइटिंग थ्रिलर्स Uh, is the content very different how is the content comparable i uh, you know you you amply made it very clear about the marketing and etc i i want to know about the content what is so, your opinion i think the storylines are kind of we have come out of where it was very primal and all but we are handling complex storylines now not just books look at a uh, breathe to you haven't seen it full but the storyline is international absolutely international so we started playing around with alter egos we started playing around with kidnappings murders uh, we we started like unlawful justice it is very sensitive topic about rape but we started writing about it making the world know. we we have talked about legal i've talked about madness i've talked so i think the content is there uh, mm-hmm. the language is also kind of coming up as 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 we as we speak and i, I give it five ten years it will be world class abhi theek hai there there is there are some there might be some deficiencies that we we don't have so many people writing that the world stops and looks ki wahan ja ke dekhe kya ho raha you know it's very mm-hmm. difficult for someone to start focusing on a, on a country where there's just one or two authors that write that kind of stuff but i guess in 5 10 years the rest mm-hmm. of the world will wake up of uh, i think a little bit more sharpening of language editing and stuff and i think we just there i think the concepts remain the same the concepts are not very different it just it, it's always a treatment of the story plots to wait char hai ek murder ka ek rape ka ek uh, abduction ka ek kidnapping yeah. laundering uh, a financial fraud uh, corporate fraud legal jargon so it is how you treat that plot and and because we started experimenting with narratives and uh, you know chronology thodo third person se first person karo uh, mm-hmm. i've done a book i told you in reverse uh, reverse narrative the starts at the uh, end and goes down to the beginning and and there will be people when once you start one or two three books uske baad aadmi you get bored and then you want to experiment with something else and that is how you break through the mold and come out with something True. new so i think with that we come to the end of our session um one thing is for sure that if you if you like if you enjoy reading thrillers which tamija's books are a must buy or uh, you, you um, and if you haven't haven't yet purchased his uh, purchased his books or, and read it i think you miss miss something otherwise i think we authors only interact of course you know like lit fest and all is is is, is great to to meet in person but at least uh, because of the pandemic we are not able to meet but at least because of such interesting initiatives we are able to have conversations uh, through uh, through a screen thank, thank you, you wish for joining us And uh, I'm sure our uh, listeners would love, would enjoy the session a lot. Thank you. Thanks, both of you. Have a lovely weekend. And whenever your next book launches, मेरे को भी बुलाना मैं भी आके आई विल बी देयर. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was really lovely and interesting. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye.